This open lot behind me is causing some controversy here in Lawrence. City officials want to use this land to build a new police headquarters. City officials also want to give some of the excess land here to the Boys and Girls Club of Lawrence so that they can build a new teen center. Just off 15th and Haskell, the Boys and Girls Club Center sits full with students. One of several locations, the center brings kids in for safe after-school activities. But due to high demand, some students aren't getting a chance. Our teen center here is at capacity. We have a wait list. And so we need to build a new facility that can both serve more kids. City officials are trying to fill this need by donating 10 of the 47 acres that they would buy if on November 4th, Lawrence residents decide to vote yes on the new police headquarters. Many residents believe the city was coupling the land with the center to get the sales tax passed, something Mike Dever wanted to set straight. I wanted to make it clear to the Boys and Girls Club that this, that we as commissioners were going to be supportive of their desire to build a new facility regardless of whether or not the election was successful. So The new police headquarters would be off McDonald Drive in the Kansas Turnpike. Colby Williams says the new center would have more interest-based rooms like a teaching kitchen, a gymnasium, and an art room, and much more to help kids stay involved throughout the years. The Boys and Girls Club mission is to you know, have kids become productive, caring, responsible citizens. And because of that, we need to keep them involved through middle school and high school years. And we're seeing a significant drop off after fifth grade. With their definite need for the teen center, Mike Dever says that the land will be given to the Boys and Girls Club. He's just unsure where that land will be. So we want to obviously put them together if it's possible, but it's not a one-to-one -one relationship. If the sales tax fails, the city is committed to providing them the land they need in order to build a new facility. Now, no matter the decision on November 4th by Lawrence voters, city commissioners still plan on giving the Boys and Girls Club land so that they can build the new teen center. With KUJH, I'm Kaylee Taylor. Today on KUJH News, the state legislature discusses a possible cigarette tax that would pack a dent in your wallet, how the hike could affect smokers. And the cold isn't just bone chilling, it's car chilling. How to drive with ease in the freeze. Plus, KU, K-State, Sunflower Showdown, part two. The game's tonight and we have the latest. KUJH TV starts now. From the University of Kansas, you're watching KUJH News. Thank you for joining us. I'm Ryan Brinker with your news. Student leaders introduce a bill into Kansas legislature that could help save student lives. The Lifeline 911 bill gives amnesty to underage students from charges related to drinking while seeking medical attention. Backers of the bill say students may not call for help in fear of getting into trouble for underage drinking. Uh, well, I think it, it's an amazing idea because I actually have a very close friend who's been in a situation where we didn't know what to do with her. The bill passed through Senate Judiciary Committee this morning. Attention bus riders, KU and Lawrence Transit want to hear from you. This week they're hosting three meetings to discuss potential bus route changes for the next year. Route 5 would change how it serves East Hills Business Park. Route 9 will serve Rock Chalk Park. Route 27 will serve 31st and Haskell, while Route 41 will extend to the Kansas Union. The first meeting is tomorrow from 1 to 2 at the, at the Lawrence Transit office. The second is Wednesday from 4 to 6 p.m. at the Union, and the last is Thursday from 4 to 8 p.m. at the Transit office. If you can't go to a meeting, you can send comments to KU on Wheels at KU.edu. Tonight, the KU men's basketball team is on the road against Kansas State. Our own Hank Cavanero is live out in Manhattan, where he managed to find a Jayhawk living in Wildcat country. Manhattan and Bramlage Arena is home to the Kansas State Wildcats, who Coach Self says is the Jayhawks' most bitter rival, but don't think there are some Jayhawk fans lying around town. Meet Victor Barbo. He has lived in Manhattan for 25 years, but he's been a Jayhawk fan for as long as he can remember. He's attended every KUK State game in Manhattan since moving here, and he shows his Jayhawk pride with his KU gear all over his office. And for as much flack as he gets, Barbo says he's red and blue through and through. When K-State beat KU 
in Lawrence, and, and KU was ranked number one at the time. And uh, I was new in town, and and everybody I knew felt the need to give me a call or or uh, or give me a, a little bit of ribbing there. Now he will be at tonight's game with his fiance, who's a K State fan. So you know somebody in the Barbo family is going home disappointed tonight. Reporting live in Manhattan, we'll be here later. I'm Hank Cavanero, KUJH Sports. Hank, thank you so much. Coming up on KUJH, a bill pushes back against the president's immigration order. Plus, malls in the U.S. are on alert. It was a beautiful Saturday morning for the opening day at the Overland Park Farmer's Market. The market opened up for the first time this year, and even in the early hours, people got in line to buy some fresh produce. The Overland Park Farmer's Market has been around for 30 years, and George Dragish has been around for 26 of them. Bringing fresh produce from his 20-acre farm, Dragish enjoys coming to the market each and every year. The best part is uh, meeting the customers up here, greeting, they're just like family. They're good customers, good people, and it's just a family affair, really. In a family affair, it was. Children followed their parents looking at a chance to grab a snack or even a balloon animal. The Overland Park market was bustling as the day moved on, which is why Hugo makes the two-hour drive from A&H Farms in Manhattan. Only at 11.30, Hugo said things were already going great. Last year was a great year, but today was a great start to the year. I mean, I don't know what time it is, but it, it's early enough that I'm already out of everything. So I'm, I'm hoping it's going to be an awesome year. It was a great opening day with a cheerful crowd. The market will be open every Saturday until the fall. The farmer's market will have events like cooking demos and concerts. The farmer's market isn't just a place to buy food. It's a place to meet great people, find great food, and enjoy the beautiful weather while you're shopping. Like George Dragish said, This is the fun part. This is the fun part. Today on KUJH News, city officials are pushing for increased sales tax to fund new police headquarters. Can the city gain support? And a new city curbside program is starting tomorrow. Is Lawrence growing greener? And Texas officials clear 43 people of Ebola. What steps will Dallas Hospital take next? KUJH News starts now. From the University of Kansas, you're watching KUJH News. Good afternoon and thank you for joining us. I'm Kaylee Taylor with your Monday News. Now, November 4th, Lawrence residents will vote on the new police headquarters, which is a proposed 2% increase in sales tax to fund the new police headquarters. City officials and the police department have been working together to get support for the proposal. City officials have hosted town meetings and forums for residents to hear concerns and to share reasons why the city needs a new facility. Even though the Lawrence Police Department already has six locations in the city, putting all the operations under one roof would benefit the force in the long run. The projected cost is currently 25 $0.7 million, but the sales tax would only fund around $24.2 million. Lawrence Police Department is giving tours of their six locations currently for the public before the election. Now you'll be seeing some blue bins on the streets starting tomorrow as Lawrence's new recycling program begins. Lawrence will now have curbside recycling for all residents starting tomorrow morning. Recycling pickup will come with regular trash pickup, but will only come once every two weeks. Residents will either fall on week one or week two for the first day of service, and then it will continue every other week for the remainder of the year. Residents can find the entire schedule and what can and can't be recycled and sign up for notifications on trash pickup by visiting www.lawrenceks.org backslash SWM backslash recycling underscore collection. Now, right, while Nigeria is receiving much praise for ha its handling of Ebola, Texas officials have cleared 43 people free of the disease. However, Dallas hospitals have recently been the center of scrutiny for its handling of the virus. 
Texas Health Resources issued an apology in handling Thomas Eric Duncan, who was the first American to contract the disease. The letter from the hospital said, we made mistakes in handling this very difficult challenge. Some workers are still limited to travel until officials make sure they are void of any infection. The Defense Department is setting up a 30-person military quick strike team to travel anywhere in the U.S. to assist Ebola cases. After Dallas has been the center for controversy in the Ebola crisis, Nigeria has declared Ebola free after 42 days without a fresh case, according to the World Health Organization. Nigeria has been praised for its containment of Ebola by representatives of the organization calling it a success story after a Liberian man brought the disease in July. Papers attribute Nigeria's success to fast tracing, monitoring, and rapid isolation of contacts. The disease hit hardest mostly in Liberia, Guinea, and Syria, killing more than 4,500 people in West Africa.